In this second video about the decoder, we study masked self-attention, which is what enables us to parallelize calculations during training. Here is an illustration of the decoder, which contains capital N decoder blocks, where all have the same structure but different parameters. Similarly to the encoder, the decoder maintains the shape of the input. However, it's important to note that the matrices that are passed between the layers in the decoder all have the same shape as the embedded version of the output sequence. That is, the number of vectors is always the same as the number of elements in the output sequence, and the embedded vectors all have the same length as the output embeddings feed it into the first self-attention layer. We note specifically that the number of vectors is generally different to the number of vectors processed by the encoder. The objective in this video is to learn about the masked multi-head self-attention layer, which is the first of the two self-attention layers in the decoder. However, let us first reason about one of the properties that we would like the decoder to have. To speed up training, it would be good if we could compute all the next word prediction probabilities in parallel. We would then feed the entire output sequence into the decoder at once. I'm here using x to denote the desired translation, since that's used as input to the decoder. We note that this is only possible during training, since we obviously don't have access to the target translation when we want to use the network to translate a sentence. So what we describe here only speeds things up during training. But this is, of course, also very important. Finally, in order to work, we need to design the network such that it cannot cheat. That is, when computing the probabilities of the next word in the sequence, it obviously should not have access to that word. For instance, when computing the probabilities of x2, the network should only have access to the output from the encoder and x1, which in this case is the start of sequence token. If we also tell the network that x2 is i, the task would be trivial, and the network would not learn to predict unseen words, which is the ability needed in order to later produce translations. Similarly, when computing the probabilities for x4, the network should only have access to the output from the encoder as well as x1, x2 and x3. And we shouldn't tell the network that the value of x4 is a. As you can see, to keep the notation simple, I've only written the probability of x4 here, which means that I've omitted the variables that we condition on, which in this case should be the encoder output and x1, x2 and x3. We have also omitted the variables that we condition on in the other expressions on this slide. Let us now illustrate how the masked multi-head self-attention layer is constructed using an example. This layer receives one input vector for each word in the translation, as illustrated in the figure. If we focus on how we compute the new embedding for Y3, we realize that it should only depend on x1, x2, and x3, since the embedding for the third word in our sequence will eventually be used to predict x4. As a first step, we proceed as usual and compute queries, keys, and values for each input token. We can also compute the z values by taking the inner products between keys and queries. Since we are focusing on how to compute y3, it's actually sufficient to compute the query vector q3 and the z values z13, z23, up until z53. For instance, to compute z13, we take the inner product between the key vector k1 and the query vector q3, and we then divide by the square root of d, where d is the length of these query and key vectors. We would normally feed these values into a softmax to obtain the weights. But here we want to ensure that x4 and x5 do not influence y3. And we therefore first mask the unnormalized weights by setting the weights for the fourth and the fifth token to zero. We then simply normalize the weights to obtain weights that sum to one. However, 
If you look closely, it's easy to see that the operation that we perform here actually corresponds to taking a softmax with respect to Z13 to Z33. We can therefore simply write this as follows, where the first three elements are given by the softmax, whereas the final two elements are zero. As you can see, we never actually use Z43 and Z53, and it's therefore unnecessary to compute them. Finally, we compute Y3 by taking a weighted average over the different value vectors. Since the weights for the fourth and the fifth value vectors are zero, Y3 does not depend on X4 and X5, which is what we wanted to achieve. The complete expression for a masked self-attention layer is easy to express in matrix form. We first compute queries, keys, values, and Z values using the weight matrices WQ, WK, WV, and the standard expressions. Expressed in terms of the unnormalized weights, we then apply a mask that sets many of the weights to zero. Specifically, this ensures that when computing the weights for word number i, the weights for all later words are zero. These weights then need to be normalized such that each column in the matrix sums to one. The result is a matrix with normalized weights in each column. We can also express this in terms of softmax operations. To fit at least a few terms on the same slide, I've here introduced a shorthand notation, SM, for softmax. I'm also using a subindex to refer to different elements in the output from the softmax operation. For instance, the first column only has one non-zero element, and for that to sum to one, that element has to be one. In the second column, the first two elements are non-zero and given by taking a softmax of Z12 and Z22. In general, column I has I non-zero elements that we can compute by taking a softmax with respect to Z1i to Zii. Finally, we compute the new embeddings by taking capital V times capital W. This implies that yi is a weighted sum of the value vectors v1 to vi. We therefore conclude that the ith word embedding only depends on the i first input vectors to this layer. This is clearly the property that we desire. However, we also note that the order of the input vectors is important when we use masked self-attention, and we no longer have a mapping from one set to another. So far, we have learned about masked self-attention, and the decoder combines H of these into the masked multi-head self-attention layers. The overall structure of the multi-head attention layer is the same as in the encoder, and we first concatenate the different Y matrices computed by the different heads, before multiplying this tall matrix with a matrix WO to obtain an output Y which has the same dimension as the input X. The only difference is that the outputs YI from the different self-attention heads are computed using masked self-attention to ensure that the embeddings never depend on later input words. 